Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Government of St. Lucia remains committed to ensuring access to health care for all St. Lucians. Diplomatic allies continue to aid in St. Lucia's fight against COVID-19. And the government of St. Lucia launches Less St. Lucia Premium Corner. The government of St. Lucia remains committed to ensuring equal and equitable access to health care for all St. Lucians. The government is currently in talks with the World Bank and other stakeholders to determine which national health insurance NHI modality is best suited to the population and its objectives. The Ministries of Health and Finance recently provided an update on NTN's program Issues and Answers. Jesse Leos reports. National Health Insurance, or NHI, is a prepaid mechanism through which an individual in a country can access health care without paying out of pocket. As part of efforts to strengthen St. Lucia's public health care system and ultimately a means to attain universal health care, the government of St. Lucia is moving ahead with the introduction of NHI. The purpose is to provide all legal residents of St. Lucia with low-cost insurance policies irrespective of their socio-economic status. The state is especially committed to purchasing policies on behalf of residents who are unable to afford the policy due to poverty or unemployment. Chief Economist in the Ministry of Finance, Janai Leos, says the government is now conducting analysis to determine the extent of its role in purchasing premiums. One of the things that we have been working with the World Bank and our other stakeholders as we are in the design, design element is to address which modality is best. So would it be best for the state to purchase all of the policies and then have persons who are poor and vulnerable receive from the state and also persons who are not poor and vulnerable but would like to, to purchase insurance to do that for the state as well? Or would it be best to have the state simply focus on the poor and vulnerable and allow your non-poor to be able to access through their employer, through a provider of their choice and so forth. The government is also meeting with insurance providers to design annual standardized insurance policies with terms changing every two to three years at an affordable price point. Right now, um, we are in discussion with um, private health insurance because they've submitted proposals. But what we envisage is that it will um, encompass a, a range of services such as inpatient care, outpatient care. We would have um, surgical benefits. Um, air, um, we, we are envisaging to have air ambulance, but it's an ongoing discussion with the health insurance um, providers. It is not set in stone, but it is our vision for the health insurance to have those sort of coverage for the population. In addition to waiving fees so that the poor and vulnerable are pooled into NHI, the self-employed and informal sector will also be required to join. The NHI will also break through traditional eligibility barriers for residents 65 years and older, as well as residents who have pre-existing medical conditions. When you look at your non-working age of so 65 and above, they cannot have insurance even if they wanted to or they have the financial means to. So the discussion with insurance providers is to explore how the entire demographic, age-wise, can be covered. When you look at the, the market right now, what you see is that many persons cannot get insurance because mm -hmm. of a pre-existing condition. Yeah. So it's actually one of, one of the discussion points that we have and to explore how can we move away from that so that anyone, regardless of they having a pre-existing condition or not, can purchase a product that is affordable. <clears throat> In the first phase of the National Health Insurance, the Ministry of Health as regulators will schedule a registration drive taking place at designated health facilities through the health information system. Diplomatic allies continue to support St. Lucia's fight against COVID-19. The government of Mexico, in its most recent act of aid, donated two ventilators to St. Lucia with the view of strengthening the island's capacity to provide care to patients affected by the coronavirus. Details in this report. The United Mexican States and St. Lucia continue to strengthen diplomatic ties for solidarity and cooperation on several projects. The government of Mexico has collaborated with St. Lucia on several projects, including that of infrastructure and health. The country has been supporting St. Lucia's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, making several donations over time. 
This time around, the government of the United Mexican States, through the Mexican Agency for International Development Cooperation, AMEXED, donated two ventilators to St. Lucia. Minister David Simon is the charge d'affaires at the Embassy of the United Mexican States in St. Lucia. The executive director of MXSEED indicated that the ventilators will contribute to the comprehensive care of patients affected by the coronavirus in St. Lucia. She opined that no country can effectively address international challenges individually, especially when facing global challenges such as the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has fostered a united front the world over as various countries continue to come to the aid of others in the fight against the coronavirus. No country has been untouched by the negative social and economic impact of this health crisis. Small island states like St. Lucia, according to Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac, have been able to withstand social and economic upheaval of the pandemic with the assistance granted by diplomatic allies. These friendly governments, she noted, have come to the aid of such states, providing much-needed support and supplies, such as personal protective equipment, PPEs, and training, to name a few. Honorable Isaac expressed immense gratitude to the government and people of the United Mexican States for the generous donation. The ventilators were handed over to St. Lucia on the 2nd of June, 2021. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. 
the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment for its Youth Empowerment Program is tackling crime and violence from a different perspective. A recently hosted anti-crime and violence extempo challenge was held virtually on June 6, 2021 in that vein. Hamadi Mark tells us more. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment through its Youth Empowerment Program hosted the Anti-Crime and Violence X Tempo Challenge on June 6, 2021. The virtual event was held in conjunction with the Community Relations Branch of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the Central Development Bank. Gilroy Hall, host of the event and mentor to the participants, expressed that the initiative sought to engage young people on their views on crime and violence using X Tempo. The format that was used is slightly different to the other challenges of the past. Generally, with the extempo challenges, you had the challenge being thrown out there and persons would just um, create their own compositions, send them in, and that was about it. But we, we, we took a different approach and hats off to the um, Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment for embracing this idea under the, the Youth Empowerment Project and of course with assistance from CDB and of course the Community Policing Initiative of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. So we, we engaged the youngsters in a series of workshops. The idea was not to tell young people what to say about these issues, but to get information from them about their perceptions, their views, their possible solutions, or any ideas that they have for developing safety in their communities and community development. Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy spoke on the important role that young people play in the betterment of society. Partners in the organization of this workshop and the implementation of the Ex Tempo Challenge, and very importantly, you, the youth of St. Lucia, who have embarked on a historic and novel journey. Partnerships in making our communities and countries safer, more productive, and a joy to live in are extremely important. And your contributions today and in the years to come can certainly improve all of our lives. Our youth have a very important role to play in the nation building and the subject matter which you are attempting to help us with is an area that we need to get under control at the soonest. The permanent secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Velda Joseph, encouraged each participant to look within themselves to become productive citizens of society. Thank you for participating in the Extempo Challenge. What a great way to showcase your creativity, your skills and your talents. Best of luck to each and every one of you. Remember, you are all winners. The Extempo Challenge engaged 24 participants in three age categories from various schools and communities in Castries. Teriel Masion participated with an entry entitled Happy People, Happy Community, and Jaden Mondesi from the Zyra Simmons Secondary School with a piece entitled Crime and Violence. Ladies and gentlemen, love my community, but there are some things that make me unhappy. The quarrels and fights really trouble me. We can do better, we can live peacefully. I may be too young to sit in parliament, but my community I want to represent. Here is my advice to everybody. Happy people means happy community. First things first, what I want to say is that our people mustn't go astray cause all we can do is hope and pray that these bloodthirsty men never get their prey rapists and thieves they are all the same rob you of your dignity but don't be ashamed admit your cries go make a report so that you will get justice one day in court the feedback obtained from the participants will be used by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to create new strategies to tackle the issues of crime and violence. From the Government Information Service, I'm Huma Dimar, reporting. The Government of St. Lucia and the Taiwan Technical Mission for the Seven Corps Project has teamed up with Massey Stores to launch the Love St. Lucia Premium Corner. Anisia Antoine has the details. 
The Love St. Lucia Premium Corner is the latest initiative under the Buy Local campaign that forms part of the enhancement of the efficiency of production, distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetable sector project, also known as the Seven Crops Project. The Premium Corner will be available at the Massey Stores supermarkets across St. Lucia and will primarily promote the buying of selected locally produced fruits and vegetables of the Seven Crops Project, which includes cantaloupes, lettuce, tomatoes, pineapples, watermelons, cabbages and bell peppers. Perishables manager at Massey Stores, Dunstan DeMille, says the Love St. Lucia campaign is a step in the right direction towards encouraging local production and consumption. We remain fully committed to working with the agricultural sector, our suppliers, our farmers, so that our customers would get the best quality produce produced locally. Our expectations for this Love St. Lucia campaign is for our local items to be our customers' first choice. We don't want it to be the only choice, but we want it to be the first choice. Permanent Secretary of the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Barrymore Felicier, says that the public-private partnership will be of great benefit to local farmers and consumers alike. But the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives we are pleased to enter into this public-private partnership with Massey um, to launch the premium, the Love St. Lucia Premium Corner and um, also recognize the efforts of the Department of Commerce in that process um, to buy local, promote local, local consumption, local production and to create in some way local demand. And that is, that is the intention. And these objectives align definitely with our 2015-2021 strategic plan at the Department of Agriculture. And it is embedded in that document that we have to boost local food systems, the quality of the food, and the safety of the food as well. Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen, expressed gratitude to all stakeholders involved in ensuring the success of yet another milestone of the Seven Crops Project. I sincerely believe that this creative and meaningful initiative has successful, successfully brought confidence to both farmers and customers. Seven Plus Project is another important step of, uh, to awareness raising, promoting food security, and mitigating the impact of climate change. The enhancement of the efficiency of production distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetable sector project, also known as the Seven Crops Project, commenced in 2019 and will culminate this year. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Here at St. Lucia Distillers, we produce an award-winning range of rums and rum products. We export our rums to the Caribbean, North America and Europe. Standards facilitate our entry into overseas markets. In the rum business, it is critical that our distillers and blenders get it right. St. Lucia Distillers is HACCP certified. We use two standards from SLBS, the standard for labeling of pre-packaged foods. SLNS 1-3-2014 and the National Specification for Rum SLNS 12-2003 We are also a registered member of the West Indies Rum and Spirit Producers Association WISPA SLBS ensures that we are up to standard and world class This message is brought to you by the Commonwealth Standards Network Welcome back we join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Kinewa's Responsibility for Information and Government of the CSE, GIS, and the Television National PIA, NTN, Capositor Nouvelle Aquayol, Presidente Primus Hutchinson. The situation in the Hospital Saint Jude qui était l'occasion d'un dégoué contre Haïti concernant les conditions, les problèmes de l'eau qui étaient affectés, cuisine dans l'hôpital, j'ai trouvé résolu. 
grand grec pour board de management saint jude win haro a vrai la vérité qui les travailleurs en l'hôpital là étaient engagés en une protestation parce que c'est une grande quantité de l'eau qui était coulé et plein champ de cuisine l'hôpital là mais selon haro depuis les ménagements trouvés au port des plaies de sala il pas perdre la cap et prend action immédiatement pour résoudre la situation le problème là c'était un résultat de un tuyau de l'eau qui était coulé monsieur haro qui dit que ménagement immédiatement prend action pour adresser la situation et quoi pour qui sorti côté qui a montré la tenir plainte contre la situation côté monde qui est à l'hôpital là pour trouver le traitement pas trouver manger c'est pas la vérité et malgré ces patients là tenir pour aspirer à titre ils ont tout trouvé manger yo à la fin immédiatement après situation de l'eau ça a résolu selon Haro de temps en temps la caïni titre et puis le système de l'eau à l'hôpital là mais ça pas jamais attention ménagement pour dommager et bien affecter condition les travailleurs et aussi monde qui à l'hôpital là pour trouver traitement il fait comprendre que plus vite qui yo ka trouver ou pas ça là et bien yo trouver ou pas ça là ménagement immédiatement prend des marches ce travail à retourner à travail même quand toute affaire te vivre te vivre en place et situation te résolu ministère des affaires éducation en ce moment, le ministère des Affaires, Construction et Travaux collabore à ce projet pour aussi écouter les gouets de l'école à Paris Castri. Les deux projets sont finis et qui en position pour opérer un logement de secours des voyants des as. Deux projets sont à l'école Gordon, ça c'est l'école Gordon and Walcott Memorial et l'école Première Ville Bouteille. Agrément ça là, c'est pour deux projets ça là, Tessier. Agrément pour deux projets ça là, Tessier. Tessier de uh, ceremony, côté company Construction and Industrial Equipment Limited, Rudy's Construction, et gouvernement cette fois-ci. Tessier, projet A, c'est pour bâtir des chambres neuf à uh, tous les deux écoles. Ça, ça c'est l'école Methodist Gordon and Walcott Memorial et l'école Première Vite Bouteille pour sa placer ses étudiants à l'école de l'école qui est plus favorable. C'est le secrétaire permanent au ministère des Affaires et Éducation, Michel Charles. Ce qui est plus important, c'est pour préparer ces étudiants là pour ce temps qui est venu. Mademoiselle Charles dit que l'école est née pour opérer à façon pour encourager les instituteurs et aussi les étudiants pour toujours avoir un désir pour assister l'école tous les jours et aussi pour ce livrement de l'amitié qui ne peut pas trouver de l'autre côté. Le ministre des Affaires et Éducation, on est Dr. Gail Rigobert, fait comprendre que, à présent, de l'école là, car ça a plus de services qui avancent, et pas seulement quand on a pour logement et sous cours de voyage des as, mais principalement quand on a une institution d'éducation qui doit avancer en ligne éducation par service internet pour l'avantage des étudiants, et particulièrement ceux qui déshabillent et ceux qui ont bien avancé à étudier. Le représentant du Parlement pour Paris Castro, on est sur le flot de dit la famille ni brisé qu'à vivre à des yeux qui qui s'en sortent et c'est pour l'année ils ont les événements qui ont embrassé ils ont des gouets protection et toute l'autre nécessité pour les étudiants même quand ils ont existé dans l'école ministre de la responsabilité pour construction et travaux on est Stevenson King fait un appel pour l'école méthodiste qui même t'a assisté ni premier service canal parce que en temps passé l'école là j'ai souffert autant et puis problème go de l'eau et que ça j'ai affecté ces étudiants autant pour ça assister l'école ces chambres neuf là en dit l'école là c'est trois étages pour l'école vide bouteille en largeur de plus que 13600 pieds carrés et Gordon and Walcott Methodist Memorial qui est deux étages là aussi qui est là pour l'auto garé il y a un parc neuf en parmi l'autre nécessité Comme l'industrie figue a pris une position nouveau pour ça aider les femmes à figue pour vivre et trouver un soulagement, continuer à recevoir un dégoût d'assistance qui est plus favorable, le ministre des Affaires agricoles et pêche, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, déclaré que, à présent, la situation de la figue est plus sérieuse. Et pour raison de cela, il y a des femmes qui ont été chères en tête avant de entrer à un arrangement neuf. Le ministre des Affaires agricoles a fait comprendre. Pendant ces femmes qui ont 
avant pour une direction du développement de vos salaires calés, le ministre a même déclaré que ce qui est plus important, c'est les femmes ni pour trouver, ils ont certifié ce qui a fait à bas une condition côté grand la place internationale là, jamais de yo pour faire. Soutenir avant l'année a commencé, avant 2021 a commencé, on a fait un exemple. Vous avez un cent de femmes qui étaient global gap certifié. Pour 2021, on a only certifié 10 femmes. 10%. Ok? Now, nous n'avons plus de femmes qui n'ont pas global gap certifié parce que les femmes qui ont global gap certifié. So, le gouvernement et puis New Board là, nous ne pouvons qui ça nous a fait pour engage international organization, non? because nous a engagé, nous a fait a special dispensation pour nous a ni plus passer 10 percent, because si nous ne pouvons continuer avec 10 percent, 10 percent, 10 10 10 percent, c'est qu'il faut nous over 8 years pour le global gap, c'est faire toutes ces femmes-là qui ont vécu. Non, ces femmes-là ne peuvent pas vécu. Vous pouvez les supporter. 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 Vous pouvez les supporter plus plus moins ça ok so, ça nous ça c'est un bail nous travaillons sur l'autre bail nous travaillons sur comme on dit c'est bail fameux support et puis matériaux bail fameux support et puis um, et puis extension donc so, quand nous gagnons plus interaction et puis fameux pour pour bail qualité éducation et puis fameux fameux ne vivez pas fait mon mon travail de fameux une éducation c'est c'est juste pour fameux d'accord that um, nous nous poursuivons All right, et puis si figue la pas bon quitter un fil. Et ça c'était ministre qui n'est pas responsable de pour faire agriculture avec la pêche à cette ici. On est avec Ezekiel Joseph qui a beaucoup de nouvelles aujourd'hui. Et moi qui vous remercie autant pour regarder et moi qui avoir une invitation pour je ne puis moi encore c'est de conserver la vie dans les prochaines trois autres nouvelles à croire la présent. Moi qui vais prendre ça tout. Je vais. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.